Thank you so much for joining us, Coach. You're welcome. I would love to kick things off with uh, your initial thoughts about this team playing in front of a packed house here at CenturyLink Field in front of a home crowd. How do you think that's going to impact play tomorrow? Well, hopefully in a good way for both teams. Uh, a really wise man once told me, uh, Jimmy Gabriel, that sometimes your opponent, because we're, we're used to playing in front of big crowds. Uh, our fans have always supported us. But, you know, sometimes your opponent can come in on these big occasions when there's a lot of people. They, they actually get a little bump as well. Now, if the game turns, there's momentum shifts. Hopefully, I think our fans, our players, they will feel that energy, and hopefully it works in our favor. But it certainly is going to be a big, big event. Uh, the energy in the building, I know, is going to be tremendous. And so I'm just hoping that a good soccer team, uh, soccer game ends up happening. And we'll go from there. We're going to open it up to questions. If you could please raise your hand. We do have two microphones on either side of the room. If you could please, when you're asking your questions, just your name and your affiliation so we can facilitate it for the cameras that are in the back of the room as well. We know a lot of familiar faces are here, but we definitely want to hear um, your name and affiliation first. So let's open it up to questions. We'll start right down here. Speaking of familiar faces. Hi, Coach. Susanna Collins with MLSsoccer.com. Um, if you could just kind of talk about the difference between um, you know, training at your regular training facility as opposed to training here at, at CenturyLink. How is, it, how is it different? Well, the, the, the difference between Starfire and, and CenturyLink is obvious. I mean, it's our home field. It's the stadium. It's, you know, what we're used to on game day. So here in front of all of you people and everything, the, the players are going to go out there and they'll feel the buzz. They, they've already felt it at Starfire. There was a lot of you there. Um, it's a big media event. Um, we usually don't train in the stadium because I feel early in the year we can do that a couple times, but once the players get a couple of home games underneath the belt, uh, they're fine. Uh, the league was, uh, excuse me, the turf was replaced this year, earlier this year, so it's in great condition. So if it, if it continues to rain a little bit, I'd like it to be a little bit more rainy and windy, but as long as it, you know, plays fast, it'll be a great surface to play on. I'm right down here with Ramses. Uh, good morning, Coach Ramses Sandoval, Tulene. Um, how vigilant and careful do you have to be uh, not to get carried away with home advantage? Speaking to some of the guys at Toronto, they went down at Azteca, they went down to El Volcan, they played big matches, um, and, and they feel they're ready to play against 70,000 at Century Link. What's your message to the guys? Well, we had to go and play an away game against the best team of the in the year this year, LAFC. And so both teams are very experienced in these big situations. I believe that Roman Torres, Nico Ladero, Raul, Christian, Jordan, Steph, I mean, we've all played in big matches. So the messaging really hasn't been that dramatic. It's not like, okay, you guys have to worry about this or you have to worry about this. I want them to play normal. I want them to play, obviously, to the event but the messaging hasn't been anything dramatic. We'll be right down here in the middle. And please do let me know if you're interested in questions. We'll get the microphone right over to you. Hey, Coach. Hey, Coach. Jillian Sakovitz, MLSsoccer.com. As someone who's been a part of Seattle and the Sounders for decades, I'll ask you this after the game also, but heading into this, where does this rank in kind of career moments for you? Well, there, there's, a, there's a, you know, a lot of buzz about, soccer in this city, hosting a final. There's a gentleman in the audience that's put on a bunch of NFL Super Bowls sitting back in the back there. I think this ranks up for me uh, with a Super Bowl type event. It's, I would say I'm immensely proud of the fact that this city has put on so far a good show. I know tomorrow, the march of the match, I know there's things planned for tonight. I know the TIFO crews have been working day and night to get, you know, a big display up. And, you know, I think it's just testament to the growth of soccer in our country and certainly testament to the, you know, people here in Seattle. We, we care about soccer. We, we enjoy going to games. We love the sport. So I'm, I'm very proud of uh, the Seattle area. We're going to go to Doug over here in the back. Um, but 
how big a role has Jordan Morris played in you guys getting here, and how remarkable is it considering what a serious injury he was coming off heading in? Yeah. Yeah, I'll go back a little bit in history with the two franchises and talk about Jordan. So in 2017, when the result didn't go our way, I mean, Toronto was all over us, and we needed someone. We needed someone to stretch the field for us. They had pushed us back, and had we had, you know, Jordan, he was just coming off a hamstring injury back then, maybe that could have helped us in that match. Throughout the games this year, you wonder why Nico's effective, why Raul's effective, why Victor Rodriguez... You know, why JJ, why Christian and Gustav have time and space was well, because Jordan has that ability to stretch the field for our team. And so he has been vital for us to play in that sense. And then you double down on that and you say he scored a couple big goals for us. You know, he got three goals against Dallas that, that, that pushed us through in that, in that particular playoff series or that particular playoff game. So he's been instrumental in our success this year. Right down here in front. I am Gerardo Campa from Mexico. Uh, your team is favorite for tomorrow? Your team is favorite for tomorrow? Well, <laughs> you guys might think so. <laughs> Again, look, the messaging is, is this. We went to Toronto in 2016. They were probably the favorites. We were able to win. They were the favorites in 17. They won. It's a grudge match here. You guys can label us as favorites. Greg, I'm sure, is going to use that to his advantage in his messaging to his team, and we will deal with it. There is, there is not, there's not any issue for us to address, you know, the different type of pressure you have when you can play as an underdog or whether you can play as a favorite. We have addressed it. We know Greg is going to be prepared. We know Toronto is going to be prepared. We are not taking this game lightly at all. We are going through every single detail that we can to make sure that we give the players the tools to be effective in the game on Sunday. We're going to go to Nick back here in the middle, then Como, and then right down here in front with Steve. Hi, Coach. Uh, Nicholas Martino from TVA Sports. Uh, most of the fans uh, are wondering if Josie Altidore is going to be uh, on the starting 11 uh, tomorrow. So is it something that... Uh, you you think about a lot, and what does it change it in your preparation, not knowing if he's going to be in the starting uh, 11? Well, we've planned for both. We, we, we've planned for Josie playing and for not playing. I'm sure he's going to be involved in the game at some point. He's too big of a player. Uh, it is a final. Uh, I'm sure he'll be involved in some way, shape, or form, whether he stars or comes off the bench. You know, that's Greg's choice. But we have planned for both. I think we have a good game plan in place. And, you know, look, even if he doesn't play, they're a very dangerous team. Obviously, they, they had to go on the road and win a couple of playoff games without Josie. So we'll be prepared for either scenario. Right back here with our ABC affiliate. Hi, Coach. So being a Seattle guy, this being a night before the biggest game for soccer in this city that you have grown up in and, and loved, how do you spend tonight? Are you playing words with friends, with family? Are you going to bed early? I mean, what, what are you doing? I am on words with friends. I do do that. Um, we're, we are going to do the same routine that we always do. We, we are going to go away and be in a hotel, have a little bit of concentration. Uh, we will have our team meal. We'll do whatever last minute film we need to do. We'll, we'll treat it as a normal game. And then normally my right-hand man, Grant Clark, and I like to go down into the, you know, into the local establishment, the bar underneath, have a glass of red wine, just unwind a little bit, relax, and then it's normal. We, all of us coaches will go back upstairs and probably watch more film. And then we'll get up in the morning, have a cup of coffee, watch a little bit more film, go over the details one more time. It's, it's just preparation for you know, what our jobs are. Our jobs are to give the players the tools to be successful, and we want to make sure we do that. Right down here. Yeah. Hello, Coach. My name is Flavio Torres for Fanaticos USA, uh, back from Orlando. Uh, my question is the following. Um, I believe Seattle Sounders is probably what we call in Spanish with the term equipo copero, which means it's a team that knows how to play these instances, right? Um, Seattle Sounders have played, you know, ever since um, the franchise was, cre was created. Uh, they've been in the top four. Um, do you believe that has some sort of advantage against LAFC and will have some sort of advantage against Toronto? Well, Toronto over the last three, uh, four years has been pretty good. So I don't know if we have a distinct advantage there. 
Um, they've been to three finals in four years, same as us. I kind of see your point, though. Yes, we have been con consistently at the top of the league. And again, that's something that I take, uh, I'm very proud of it. You know, it, it's, a, it's when Ziggy started the franchise, you know, Adrian, we started off, you know, we were successful in our uh, inaugural seasons. Toronto had a little bit different road. I mean, they weren't quite as successful early when they joined the league, but they certainly have caught up in a hurry. Uh, LAFC that you mentioned certainly has been a fantastic uh, uh, entry to our league. They have obviously had a lot of success in the regular season, and I'm sure that that franchise, they're a very aggressive, you know, forward-thinking uh, franchise. They'll have success in the playoffs, I'm sure. Yeah, right here with Q13. Hi, Coach. Michelle Ledka with Q13 Fox in Seattle. Uh, last time you guys played Toronto this season, they had yet to acquire Omar Gonzalez. Mm -hmm. Got him, obviously, middle of the season, and they've gone on such a good run since then. How is the addition of him kind of factored into your tactical tr kind of mentality of what you guys are working on as you get ready for tomorrow? It's the same. It's, you know, we, we forget about Omar. Everybody's talking about Josie, but what about Omar? Because he's obviously a very talented player. So, Michelle, it's the same thing. We, whether it's Simon, whether it's a back three or five, whatever you want to call it, we've prepared for all those scenarios. And obviously Omar is a big presence, especially on set pieces. So we'll, we'll be ready for him. Our last question is going to go to Ms. Jada Evans, Seattle Times. Hey, Coach. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I wanted to ask uh, if you could open up a little bit about the final details or what's going to be important in training today for the team. Today we're going to let them have fun, Jada. We're going to go out there and try and let them warm up because it is a little cold and rainy. We're going to let them play 5v2. We're going to play our little small-sided games, and we're just going to try and let them do what they normally do. They're all, they're, they're, look, they're young men, but some of them still act like kids, and they still like to play. So we're just going to let them play today. <laughs> With that, we're going to let Coach finish up preparing for his training session. Thank you so okay. much for your time. Thank you, everybody.